So let's move over to our lab. And the first thing we want to do is jump over to our SharePoint server. In this case, the server is App1. The first thing we need to do is open the SharePoint administration or central administration console. So we'll go ahead and log in to the admin console. And we need to make a couple of changes here to alternate access mappings. So under the system settings tab, select configure alternate access mappings. And here, the first thing we want to do is edit our public URLs, and we want to select the SharePoint site. In this case, the AAM collection will be for the default SharePoint site. So in the internet field, we want to specify the URL that we're going to use to access the SharePoint site publicly. And again, as I'd mentioned earlier, this is going to be using the URL SharePoint.VintageSurf.com. We will also be using this uh, using SSL, so it's going to be with the HTTPS protocol, so we will need to prefix the FQDN with HTTPS. Great, and so that's all we need to do here, so we'll click Save. And again, later we're going to enter this URL, SharePoint.VintageSurf.com, into the settings in Forefront UAG, and so it's essential that we have this alternate map access mapping configured correctly. The next thing we need to do is actually select Add Internal URLs, and this is necessary because uh, in this scenario, our SharePoint site does not use SSL. You'll see that it's just using HTTP. As a matter of fact, we can actually log in. can actually log in and you'll see that SSL is not in place on this particular SharePoint site. In order to protect the exchange of authentication or logon credentials externally, the UAG server will use SSL, but it will not use SSL to the backend server. So we need to prepare the SharePoint site for that eventuality. So make sure that the alternate access mapping collection still indicates that it is SharePoint 80. We will type the URL without the HTTPS this time, just HTTP, and use the same fully qualified domain name. So SharePoint.VintageSurf.com. Next, we want to select the zone that we chose to put this in earlier, which was Internet. So we'll select Internet and click Save. So at this point, uh, we've completed all of the changes necessary to the SharePoint server, so now we can actually proceed with configuring and publishing with Forefront UAG. So we'll jump over to our UAG server. And on the UAG server, I'm in the management console already. I've expanded my HTTPS connections, and I've selected my portal. So I'll go over here to Applications and select Add. Choose Next. And here we're going to select Web Applications, and this time we're going to select our version of SharePoint. In this particular case, we're using SharePoint Server 2010. So I will choose that option and select Next. We'll give it an application name. Again, this is a name as it will appear in the uh, UAG portal. So we choose Next. Again, we're going to leave all of the endpoint policies in their defaults. We'll choose Next. Here we're going to configure just a single application server, and you choose next once again, and we'll specify the name or the IP address of this server. Now, this server, I typically use uh, fully qualified domain names, but in this case I just want to use the single label host name because that is the way that the server is actually accessed internally. So we can use the single label host name here and that's just fine. Now here's the trick to making this work, is the public host name is the application specific host name for this particular application. So we'll use SharePoint. And again, this name, SharePoint.VintageSurf.com, does need to be in public DNS. It does need to resolve to the IP address assigned to the external network interface of the UAG server. You can accept the defaults for the rest of this uh, particular screen and choose Next. We will use single sign-on. Again, we'll select Add and choose our Active Directory server. Select all of the default settings here and choose Next. And again, the default settings here are fine, so the portal name is listed. If we need to put that in a folder, we can certainly do that. And so we'll choose Next. 
authorize all users. As I explained before, that does not allow everyone in the world to use the application. It just means once you've authenticated to the portal, you can actually go ahead and use this application. So we'll choose Next. Review our settings and choose Finish. And once again, we'll save and apply the configuration and activate it. So activation has been completed successfully. So let's jump over to our client and we'll test the functionality of this SharePoint publishing. So we're going to browse to the portal. We'll authenticate. And of course, now you'll notice that we have our second application added to the portal, SharePoint 2010. So let's go ahead and select this. And there's our SharePoint site available to all of our remote users. Now, you'll notice that this application actually opened inside of the Forefront UAG portal window. And I chose that application or I chose that particular setting just to demonstrate what an application running inside of the portal looks like. If I were to select uh, the home button, I could actually go back home and so forth. If I need to run this in uh, as a user, if I need to run this in a separate window, I can just select control and click. It will open in a new tab and I can see that in kind of full screen mode if I need to. But again, as an administrator, you do have the option to specify whether or not applications run in their own window or in the window of the portal. And so uh, in this case, I actually chose to demonstrate the, uh, the application running inside of the portal. Ultimately, that's uh, your decision to make.